everyone. This is a video tutorial to help you understand how to determine the R or S configuration of an optically active compound when dealing with its perspective formula. So the first thing I want to do is just lay out the general guidelines. So the first thing you want to do is rank the relative priorities of all of the groups attached to your chiral carbon. So there should be four groups, so you're going to rank priority one through four, where one has the highest priority and four has the lowest priority. The second step is you want to make sure that the fourth position is placed on the hatched wedge. This is a vital part to it, it cannot be skipped, and we'll look at how we would deal with it if it wasn't on the hatched wedge. The third thing is to draw an arrow going from 1 to 2 to 3. It's okay to cut through 4 in order to get to 1 to 2 and 3. You can't cut through any of the other numbers. We'll look at what that means. And the fourth thing is, once you've drawn your curved arrow, if you find that your arrow is moving in a clockwise direction, you have an R configuration. And if you're moving in a counterclockwise direction, then you're dealing with the S configuration. Remember that R and S don't tell you anything except nomenclature. This is how we can look at a compound and distinguish between two enantiomers. It does not tell us anything about dextrorotary or levorotary aspects of our particular compounds. So let's apply these rules to an example. Okay, so now let's apply those rules that we just learned. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this asymmetric center. Remember, an asymmetric center is where you're going to have a carbon that is sp3 hybridized and has four different groups attached to it. So now we've identified that we have that kind of asymmetric center here. So the first thing we want to do is rank the priorities of the groups. So now there are two schools of thought for how to rank priorities. One is based on the atomic number of the atom that is attached to that center, or it's based on the mass, whichever one has the higher mass. I find some complications with mass only because people then interpret that to mean the bigger the compound attached, the higher priority it is, and this can mislead you sometimes. So for me, my preference is whatever has the at higher atomic number, this is the one that's going to have the higher priority. So if we take a look at this over here, we're comparing chlorine, carbon, carbon, and hydrogen. Notice that I'm saying carbon, I am not saying ethyl. Just look at the single atom that's attached, not the whole thing. So over here, chlorine has the highest atomic number, therefore it's going to have the highest priority. So I'm going to give this one a mark of 1 as its priority. Additionally, I can tell you that hydrogen, because it's got the lowest atomic number, would be the lowest priority. So I will call it 4. Now I'm dealing with carbon compared to carbon. When you have exactly the same atom attached, what you want to do is go out one more and see what it is attached to. So over here, for example, this carbon is attached to three hydrogens, whereas this carbon is attached to two hydrogens and one other carbon. This carbon outranks the hydrogens that I have here, meaning that this group here would have a higher priority and this would have the lower priority. So now I've prioritized all of my groups. The next thing you need to make sure is that your fourth priority is on the hatched wedge. In this case it is, so this is a very straightforward example. We will look at a case where it is not and see how you could possibly deal with that. But because this case it is, we're good, we can move on to step three, which is to draw a curved arrow from one to two and two to three. So over here I'd start with one, one goes to two, and now I'm going to go from two to three. Remember that it's completely fine to cut across four when you're trying to get from one number to the next. So ultimately, my arrow is moving in this direction here. So because I'm moving in a clockwise fashion, I know that this is going to be the R configuration. Let's look at a case where four is not on the hatched wedge. Okay, so now let's look at a case where group four is not where you need it to be. So just as before, you're given a compound and you rank the priorities of each group. And now you stop to see where is group 4. Group 4 has to be on the hatched wedge, however it is not placed there. It needs to be here, but we find it's up there. At this point, do not just figure out the arrow and then switch it. This will lead you to the wrong answer many times. What you want to do over here is make this group 4 get to that position. There are a couple of ways you could do it. One is kind of visual. What you want to do is find a pivot point. So over here is going to be my chlorine. Chlorine can stay put. I'm going to take chlorine and I'm going to use it as kind of a pivot point where I'm going to rotate around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, spin it, so while I'm spinning around chlorine, it stays put, but these three are moving around, kind of like a merry-go-round. So as I spin here, I spin once, three would move up to the fourth position, 
four would move down to the second position, and two would move to the third position. So as we see over here, and with that one little rotation, I have group four exactly where I need it to be, on the hatched wedge. So at this point, I'm now able to draw my arrow from one to two, two to three. I'm still going clockwise, so in this case, I would have my R configuration. Remember that these two are identical compounds. All I've done is rotate it in three-dimensional space.